uh, consider this particular example. Given the demand equation, determine the highest price when the quantity demanded is zero. So the given demand equation is Q equals to 100 minus 5 over 2P. And um, what is being asked is to know the price when the quantity demanded is zero. So algebra can help us uh, uh, compute for this. And of course, we can just substitute zero to quantity demanded since the value of quantity demanded is zero as given in the problem. And now we only have one unknown variable and the unknown variable is P. So we have now zero is equal to 100 minus five over two P. And so by solving P, we have to transpose the negative slope will become now positive slope when we transpose it to the other side of the equality sign. So, um, bringing all the, 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 bringing the, the, the whole term to the other side, we now have 5 over 2p is equal to 100. So that 5p will now be equal to 100 times 2. So we multiplied 2 to 100 because the 2 came from as the divisor which can be found, uh, found in the other side. So if a divisor found in the other side, the equality sign will be transposed. It will become a multiplicand. And so the denominator of 2 in the other side, if transposed in the other side, will become a multiplier of 2. So that 5p now is equal to 100 times 2. And simplifying, we can now have the value of p equal to 200 over 5, which is equal to 40 pesos. Now, from this given equation or demand equation, remember that the demand equation is a slope intercept form wherein we have the value of A and uh, we also have the value of B given. The slope and the intercepts are given. Given this uh, slope and uh, intercepts values, we can easily um, derive our demand schedule. How are we going to do this? What we have to do is first to have a column of price and quantity. And in the first row of that table, we will al always give a value of zero for the independent variable. So the independent variable as always uh, is, should be started always with a value of zero. And so A of the demand equation which is equal to 100 will be the um, paired value of zero in that particular table. That is to say, when the price is zero, quantity demanded is 100, which basically what the uh, value of A in the given uh, demand equation stands for. Now, if we increase price for every peso increase in price, should we say, for every peso increase in price, so from zero, it will be increased by one. So since the price now is one peso, how much will be the quantity demanded? So the quantity demanded will be expected to change by the amount of your slope. And what is the slope? Five over two is 2.5, right? So for every one peso increase in price, 
the quantity demanded will decrease by 2.5 units. So if originally the quantity is 100 when the price is zero, then when the price increased to one peso, the quantity de demanded will now become 97.5. And so it has decreased by 2.5. So every time we increase X or price by 1 peso, quantity demanded will decrease by 2.5. That's why when the price now is 2 pesos, quantity demanded is now only 95. Originally, it was 97.5 when the price is 1. So there is a decrease by how much? There, there is a decrease in quantity by 2.5 while the, there is an increase in the price by one peso. Notice that we have uh, two tables. So that is just to say that the first table actually uh, is showing us that the price is uh, increased by one peso every time. But how about in the second table? Well, the second table is simply just the continuation of what we have in the first. So it will start from the price of six pesos since the uh, last price in the first table is five pesos. So you, you will notice that every time we increase price by, five, by one peso, quantity demanded will decrease by 2.5 units. So uh, price, if the price is 10 pesos, the quantity demanded will only be equal to 75. Now, in this particular uh, table, following table, next slide, we are referring to the same equation. The equation that we're talking about here is uh, given by Q is equal to 100 minus 5 over 2P. But if we're going to, uh, because it would make us to have a very long table if the increase in price is always uh, by one unit. This time, we're going to show what about if we're going to increase price uh, by 10 units every time. So every time we increase the price by 10 units, what will happen to the Q? So notice that the price started from zero and then in the second row, the price went out to be 10. And so the third is 20, the fourth is 30, the fifth row is 40. If you, you, you um, consider the, uh, the, the first equation, 100 minus 5 over 2P, the slope is 5 over 2. Now, because we wanted a change in price every time by 10, so the two pesos should have to be as the denominator of the slope. The two pesos as the de denominator of the slope will have to be made to a value of 10. So instead of two, it has to be replaced by a value of 10. So how can the two become 10? Of course, in order for two to become 10, we have to multiply it by five. So the denominator of 2 in the first equation will have to be multiplied by 5 so it will become 10. The fact that uh, the denominator was multiplied by 5, the numerator should also be multiplied by 5. So our numerator of 5 has also to be multiplied by 5. So 5 times 5 is 25. So that our equation now is quantity equals to 100 minus 25 over 10p. 
This second equation, 100 minus 25 over 10p, is not actually different from 100 over 5 over 2p. They are just the same because um, if you get the lowest term of 25 over 10, it's still the same as 5 over 2. So what is the um, um, benefit of uh, making our slope bigger in the value of the numerator and the denominator? It will actually um, uh, help us to uh, uh, make our table shorter. No? So instead of every one unit increase in price, we can have every 10 units increase in price. So that's our table has these uh, row values of 0, 10, 20, 30, 40. And our quantity, of course, will have this value of 175, 50, 25, and 0. Uh, if you will notice, no, in the first rows of the paired value of P and Q, we have 0 and 1 half respectively in the first row. In the second row, we have 10 and 75. So how come we have 75 in Q when price is 10? Because every time we increase uh, price by 10, as stated in the equation, the numerator, which is 25, tells us of how much decrease in quantity demanded there is every time the price is to be increased by 10 pesos. So uh, that's why um, quantity every time will also decrease by 25 units. So every time the price will increase by 10 pesos, quantity will also decrease by 25 units so from 100. 75, 50, 25, 0, it actually tells us only that uh, the, the change in quantity is 25 and the change in price is 10 because we move from 0, 10, 20, 30, 40 on the column of price. Now, the demand curve can be actually easily graphed once that we have the table. So let us make use of the shorter table you know, um, so that we can also have a, we can also have a sh shorter demand curve. So notice that uh, we have here the zero price, uh, the, the paired value of zero price and 100 Q. And the last uh, row has a paired value of 40 for price and 0 for Q. So this paired value of P and Q are actually those points that you can observe when you plot the demand curve. So notice that in a given demand curve, the line is downward sloping. The price is uh, plotted vertically and the quantity is plotted horizontally. The point is, it's not wrong to plot the quantity vertically and the price uh, plotted uh, horizontally. It's not wrong. It's, it will still make you to have a downward sloping line. But it is just a practice in economics that um, the P and the Q should be, or the quantity rather, should be stated on the horizontal axis and the price be stated on the vertical axis. So, uh, well, uh, there is another table here which is uh, 5 and 12. Actually, I uh, just uh, failed to remove the uh, because I edited some of the values of Q actually from the original uh, uh, PowerPoint that I used. So you can just ignore it. So now um, once you have a uh, demand schedule or demand uh, table, you can now proceed to demand curve. So 
that's the end of our um, lesson on uh, the demand function. We will have more after uh, I have uh, introduced to you the supply function also. Bye-bye.